Hi, welcome friends. We're going to be talking about ZepBound insurance coverage and GLP-1 medication insurance coverage. I've got a leading expert here with us today. How do we get ZepBound insurance coverage? Let's dive in. Yeah, that's a that question is something that we've built an entire ecosystem around trying to understand better. And I think we're getting pretty darn good at it. Uh, but you know, how do we get GLP-1 coverage in general, right? So there are indications for these medications. Uh, we have to understand what those indications are. We have to understand the particular patient's insurance, right? Which insurance company are you with? Who is the pharmacy benefits manager? What is your employer selected for your plan? And then we just dive in and do what's called a PA or a prior authorization, which is essentially think of it as like a request to your insurance company. So a patient comes to us and says, you know, my BMI is a 34, my BMI or my weight has been getting progressively higher over the years. I've tried so many things. I have a history of trying lifestyle modifications of diets of things like that. And I would love to try one of these medications. I don't know what my coverage looks like, you know, so they sign up, we get a picture of their insurance card and we put in a request. The PA is essentially a request to the insurance company. And we request and say, Hey, we have this patient. This is their situation. Would you consider coverage on these medications? And we put it in for all anti-obesity medications, you know, so a Zepbound, a Wagovi, even the ones that have indications for type 2 diabetes, like a Manjaro, Zempic, you know, even Trulicity, Sexenda. And we we wait to see what the insurance company says. And it's generally that process is very quick, seven to 10 days, but usually on even faster than that. It's a wow. digital process where we get responses from them. And then if we get approvals, we're good to go. If we get denials, then we go into the next phase, which is called the appeal phase. So essentially they say, nope, sorry, not going to cover it. And they give us another chance to say, let me give you a narrative. Let me tell you a story about this patient. And let me try to explain to you, insurance company or pharmacy benefits manager, why this would be a good decision for you to cover this patient, to help them improve their health outcomes with this medication. Because for them, it, it comes down to like cost. Yeah. And we can try to paint a story of if we see a HbA1c level progressing over the years, or if we see BMI getting progressively worse mm -hmm. or symptoms of sleep apnea or PCOS worsening, we can tell them yeah. a story about how this medication might seem like a big cost to you now, but it actually could be a cost saving decision for you in the future if we were able to prevent the progression of some of these other elements going on. So yeah, we, yeah. this is so, so important because so many people are like, I can't get coverage and you have a whole department. Like that's their job, right? <laughs> and they're great. I, you know, when we started this to now, I mean, it's the iterations, right? I mean, it's the mm -hmm. repetitions of this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can almost sit there now without even running it and be like, okay, this is the PBM. This is the insurance company. Let's take a look at the employer. Okay. I think we're going to probably have a better chance of getting an approval for ZepBound if we approach it like this, you know? And so yeah. it's very tactical and, um, you know, always within the, um, the confines of what is compliant, you know, um, we definitely want to make sure that we're being compliant but we definitely try to help our patients just tell their story to the insurance companies. And there are ways to do that efficiently and effectively. I love that. I love that. So I wanted to dive right in, but who are you and where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So um, my name is Sina Arham and I'm one of the co-founders of, there it is, fr joinfridays.com, right. <laughs> Fridays Health. Uh, we are a nationwide uh, virtual health clinic. We are focused on metabolic health or obesity care. Uh, so you'll see a clinician uh, in your state via video visit, and uh, they'll make determinations on whether these medications can be appropriate for you. They prescribe with these medications all day long. So they understand dose escalations, dose de-escalations, they understand side effects. Uh, and then our program also provides all kinds of support circumferentially around GLP-1 medication. So you're going to get movement coaching. You're going to get dietetic coaching. You're going to get mental health coaching. Um, we're going to have support groups. You know, essentially, uh, we've built this program at Fridays where we can improve access to care. And whether access to care for you means is it affordable or will my insurance cover it or will I have other elements of care? I don't want to just get a prescription for my PCP and then be sent on my way. I'd like to understand and, and get a better grasp of how I can improve and, you know, get better vitality and get better results out of this medication. Mm -hmm. When I had first started with, uh, I've lost over 83 pounds with um, Manjaro weight loss and Zepbound weight loss. I started with my primary care doctor. What if someone's starting with their primary care doctor versus moving to a telehealth company? If someone's just starting this journey, like where should they go? <laughs> I would say that you should go where you feel like you're getting care. And mm -hmm. if you are blessed enough to have great care with your primary care provider, which mm -hmm. there are many of them around the country that are getting progressively more familiar and comfortable with provi providing care with these medications, 
if you are getting appropriate care from the insurance perspective and a prior authorization administrative side, if you're getting, if you feel cared for, you know, yeah. it's my opinion, and I, this is just an opinion. It is my opinion that these medications are an amazing tool for doctors that are familiar with them. Uh, they, they are a catalyst for, I think, a big change in a yeah. you know wave of change that we're going to see in the way we treat metabolic health. But I think by themselves, they would not be necessarily um, so powerful. I really think that mm. there should be a holistic approach. You should take the entire patient, the mind, body, spirit into account. And so if you are receiving care that feels like you are cared for wherever you are, you should be there. If you're looking for something that maybe is a little bit mm -hmm. closer, more touch points, um, more circumferential, right, uh, then... I think that a place like Friday's could be mm -hmm. a good option as well. Yeah. yeah. So if someone is just starting, what's the difference between semi-glutide and terazepatide? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's a question I get asked often. So mm -hmm. I, on, on Fridays, I go, I do TikTok live a lot on our TikTok, mm -hmm. join, at join Fridays. I do it a lot. Mm -hmm. And I get that question. I'm still shocked at how many times per day I get mm -hmm. that question. I, I just keep thinking that everybody already knows, but mm -hmm. the biggest difference between the two medications, uh, and there are other anti-obesity medications, dulaglutide, liraglutide, you know, you can go all the way back to O5 with exanatide, but the two, you know, popular ones these days that are mostly being talked about are semaglutide and terzepatide. Uh, semaglutide is the active ingredient in medications Ozempic and Wagovi, uh, and then terzepatide and Monjaro and Zepbound. So think of... Those are the same main and those are the same meds, right? So semaglutide is a single agonist. So it's a GLP-1, um, glucagon-like peptide one agonist. So uh, it, it essentially acts on a single hormone, right? Uh, that's how you can look at it. And then terzepatide is a dual agonist, GLP-1 and GIP. So it acts on two hormones. Uh, that's the biggest difference between the two, you know, in the, in the clinical trials for each of these on average patients on semaglutide lost about 15% of their body weight over the period of the trial and trisepatide was about 20%. Many patients are experiencing significantly higher, but we're talking about averages there. So I often get asked this question, well, if I start on, you know, which one's better, mm -hmm. I would yeah. say the one that is better is the one that you can afford the mm -hmm. one that maybe your insurance will cover and the one that works best for you, because I'll tell you, Ozempic and Wagovi was the, you know, the, the, the big name until yeah. it came along, but it's, they're both still, they both address metabolic health in a novel and elegant way. And there are plenty of patients that I am personally working with mm -hmm. in our program that I know thought that they were going to have a better result on one versus the other and came mm -hmm. to find yeah. through trial of their own body that actually this other one is, is better mm -hmm. for me. So it, it's hard. I get that. I ask like, which is better that there's no way that anybody could answer that for you. You know, you could look at the clinical trials, but that doesn't take into account who the individual patient is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when someone is looking to start on GLP one medication, why should they come to join Fridays? Why, why, why are you the best out of the telehealth space? Uh, I think that there are a lot of elements that make us very unique, right? I think we are the first in the space that is really offering a holistic health care. Uh, we want you to have access to the medications. We want them to be affordable for you. But also we want you to be able to tap into other resources that could be useful to you. So mm -hmm. there's a weekly coaching session with a dietitian. Uh, it's a Q&A office hours. And our community, our patient community has kind of gone, come there and become friends. It's like a weekly meeting. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get to come there and see your friends. How was last week? Oh, I know you were constipated last week. Did you try that thing I sent you a link for? Mm -hmm. That was the intention from the beginning, mm -hmm. but to see how uh, Fridays is various co coaching, like our mental health coaching. We have licensed yeah. professional counselors that do coaching and they do presentations to see how much mm -hmm. value and community patients were deriving from that space. We sat down and took a look and said, this, we need more of this. So now we're at it. We've just, as of next week, we'll be having support groups led by another counselor, not really anything that's structured. It's just more like a place to come and share a win, share a trauma, share a rough moment, share maybe a significant other had something negative to say, or a parent or a coworker mm -hmm. and come to a place that the community is all there. You know, I think when you have a certain shared experience or shared trauma in life with people, mm -hmm. it's nice to not have to explain the initial elements. Like when you tell a friend who maybe hasn't had obesity, I've lived in a smaller body my whole life. So 
I may not be able to understand mm -hmm. as easily and as quickly and as deeply an experience that a patient with obesity had. But if you come to a space where everybody there has some like thread of shared experience, yeah, I just feel like it's it, what I've seen happen there is like an exhale. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. This yeah. feels relaxing and comfortable and yes. familiar. And, and that's what I think Fridays is doing in a way that, you know, I haven't seen elsewhere yet mm -hmm. and continue to expand upon. I would hundred percent agree after testing out a lot of different places and starting with my primary care doctor, moving to y'all, our first, one of our first conversations, I literally cried to you <laughs> and your reaction back of when I like got super, super, which I don't do. I, I'm usually in like business dealings and things like a tough cookie. And I like I, your reaction back to that was like, this is the place that I want to share with thousands of people is the place to go for GLP-1 medication. It is the community. It is the solution. And it is the support that needs to make and transform lifelong um, for me, for my, my belief system of making these lifelong choices of having to change food, make behavioral changes with food, make behavioral changes with physical activity, which y'all support that. I mean, you tick every box and support that someone needs with GLP-1 medication. And you Sorry. know, like lifestyle modifications like that are mm -hmm. powerful and mm -hmm. they can be very effective, but if, if somebody has metabolic dysfunction in the absence of addressing that dysfunction, even when these yeah. lifestyle modifications are optimized, yes, you know, anybody with obesity or who's carrying a significant amount of extra weight throughout their life can tell yes. you they've tried literally yes. every diet, every yes. workout regimen they have, yes, they have, you know, really decreased the quality of their life, right? Restricted things so greatly in order to try to like achieve this thing. And so I think that having those lifestyle modification education and support yeah. is important as a companion to this GLP-1 journey, right? Because, right. And, and I'll tell you, the reason why we have all the different types of support is because some patients, like for example, like they mm -hmm. already go to the gym a lot. They don't feel like they need that movement support, Yeah. but they don't have access to like mental health. And they're just like, hey, I'd like to come right. tap this thing, you know? So the idea is it's all a cart. You come and you take from it what- Yeah it's valuable to you or what feels like it speaks to you at this point in your journey. And some patients will come to dietetics every Monday and mental health coaching every other time, and then t spend months where they don't come at all because yeah. they're just, that's not what they need in that moment, yeah. you know, but it's always, the goal is for it to always be there for you when you need it. Come rest your weary head. We're here. Like what's going on? I love that. I love that. I love that so much. And so let's talk a little bit about the advisory board at Fridays, because I think that that's an important component in general that people need to be looking for as they're going through looking for telehealth companies. For me, you kept telling me layers upon layers upon layers. I was like, that is really smart. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about your advisory board at Fridays? Yeah. So um, I'm not a physician. Mm -hmm. I just kind of run the operations here, but my co-founder is a double board certified family medicine and obesity medicine physician, Dr. Weister Kabi a uh, good friend of mine since childhood. Uh, he knows that I have a close personal relationship with mm -hmm. obesity. Um, and so there's there are some big emotional elements for me as to why mm -hmm. I have involvement in this space. And he is, an, as an obesity medicine physician, he wanted to get involved in trying to grow something. And he thought that I'd be the right person to come along with him. So he is the, you know, the my co-founder and then we have a chief clinical advisor, uh, Dr. Holly Lofton. She is an mm -hmm. obesity physician. She's been one for, I think, around 15 years, and she's a double board certified in internal medicine and obesity medicine. And she actually is the director of NYU Langone's Weight Medicine Clinic. Um, she runs the show That's at smart. NYU. Yeah. So uh, when Dr. Weiss and I were beginning this this program and we were trying to understand who are we as Fridays and you know what are what are we trying to achieve at Fridays? We reached out to her. Actually, she was one of the educators that that taught him when he was getting his obesity medicine cert, uh, board certification. So he always kept saying, like, Dr. Holly Lofton, I just, you know, she's the one. And so we got a meeting with her and I, we sat down, we went back and forth for a while. And I'll never forget, like, she was, she gets a lot of, I think, conversations and offers to come her way. Yes. And at the very end, she was like interviewing me at the very end. She was like, sum up Fridays, sum up your mission yeah. in one statement, in one sentence. What are you? And I said, we're an access to care platform. Mm -hmm. And she, she just literally said, I'm in, I'm in. She was like, because I work in Manhattan and you guys are based in California. This is not where patients have issues with access to care, but across this country, there are millions of patients who need this care. Mm -hmm. If you can find a way to touch them and educate them, then they try to go look for the care locally. They can't find it. So if you can educate them, 
and then provide the care and the support, I'm in because I, I personally, she flies around the country doing talks for, you know, bariatric mm -hmm. conferences and weight medicine conferences. And mm -hmm. she was like, I'm, I come into contact with hundreds of thousands of providers that just want to provide mm -hmm. this care. There's no way to do it, you know? And so uh, I think our clinical advisory board between them have about 20 years of obesity medicine experience. They collaborated on developing the medical protocol for Fridays and it's just, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm so proud to have these physicians be the ones behind our protocol because Dr. Lofton specifically has been through, she has been prescribing with GLP ones for over a decade, you know, with, with Ixanatide, the, the one that was, you know, in 2005, the first ever FDA approved medication. So I, I think that it just puts us in a position to really understand how to support our patients. Through yeah. It. For sure. For sure. Well, I want everyone who's watching, if you choose to shift over to join Fridays to use the code queen, that's Q U E E N. Um, well, well, Fridays has been very generous for the Countess of Shopping community to give a discount. If you would like to start your membership, that will be linked down in the description link below. I also want to know what your questions are. Um, cause I would love to have you back on the show. I know we have more. I've just hit the tip of the iceberg of some of them. There is going to be a tidal wave of other questions to have you back on the show, um, to answer more. And I'm so grateful that you took time out of your busy schedule. Yeah. I know that your customer service care and level in which you give patients is incredible. And so thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. I appreciate it. Of course. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And yeah, sure. of course, any questions, or if you want me to come back mm -hmm. and go through some Q and a from what comes up in the chat. I'd be honored to do so. It's fun. Awesome. Everyone check out the link down in the description link below too. Have a great day, friends. We'll see you soon. Bye guys.